we have Ben, and he is going to show us how to use Vim. And uh, I'll let you take it away. All right. So this is not a super technical talk, so it won't be like that or any of the other ones. So let's. Can you guys hear me all right? Yep. All right, cool. So this is a brief history of Vim from tmux files. I was so inspired by Michaela's talk that I went out and made this. And uh, I think it's beautiful. So oh, I have this thing in the way. One second. All right, who are you? I'm a software engineer too at Liaison International. I'm a Firehose alumni. I check all the pre-work and Slack forums and you know help out there. And I was a slow pitch softball MVP. So these are pretty much the best credentials I have. Uh, what are we talking about? Tmux, which is having a whole mess of terminals inside one terminal. You can have you know different windows. It's great. You can use Teammate, which is sharing your terminal between two different users, which we will demonstrate here. And we have Vim, which is editing right inside your terminal. And then also dot .files. <coughs> dot .files are for customizing your terminal. So what is Tmux? Tmux is terminal multiplexer, which is fancy for saying you can use a whole bunch of terminals. And you, I'll demonstrate that next, but I have the obligatory inception GIF here for that. Let's see. So here is my terminal. And Tmux is a little bit tricky to use at first. So there's a prefix you have to hit. And then once you do that, let's see. I don't know why that's not working. I don't know if the screen share is screwing with that. My prefix isn't working. Hmm. All right, hold on one second. I'm going to stop screen share and see if this will work. It's not working, guys. <laughs> this is going great. All right, put an eye term. Yeah, you do need more gifts. I know, they're coming. I'll feed you. Ah, oh, this is bizarre. Hold on just one second. I'm going to see if I can get on my desktop. Now you're the only one stopping yourself from watching football. I'm watching football. I have it on over here. I'm all right. This is bizarre. I don't know why this is working now. All right. Well... Maybe we can just move on. I think Vim's going to work. Vim's working great. All right, well, I can uh, show a demonstration after for anyone who wants to see Tmux. I'm not going to hold this up for that. <clears throat> but like I said earlier, Tmux is uh, very tricky at first. There's a prefix that you have to learn, and then there's about 30 different keys that come in handy. There's different keys for splitting the screen horizontally and vertically. Hey, Ben, oh. we can't see your screen anymore, just as a heads up. Okay. This is going great. <laughs> All right, are we good? You're right, cool. So, best ways to practice Tmux, mess around inside of Tmux while looking at commands. And there are no other ways. You will fail if you try to do it any other way. There's way too much stuff to try to remember. You cannot do it. It's going to make it a lot harder for you. And I'm sorry for that. There's no other ways. What is Teammate? Teammate is a tool based on Tmux for terminal sharing. So it's my favorite tool for pairing because you get to use it with Vim. And Vim is what we're getting into next. So let's see if I can get a Tmux session going. What you need to do for Tmux is type Tmux. And it's also not working. What is going on? It doesn't give me the SSH at the bottom. So what usually happens is you get an SSH key down at the bottom over here. I'm not sure why it's not happening here. Maybe I actually try it in terminal. Nope. I don't know why this don't is you type teammate instead of Tmux? Yeah, you're right. It was sessions nested, so it thinks I already have a Tmux session going. Yep, there it is. All right, so I'm going to send this over to myself on my desktop computer with this cat gif on the top. And now I'm connected. So Ben, are you simulating right now pair programming with somebody else on two different 
Yeah, so this this is pair programming. I'm not typing on my laptop here. It's my hand. Uh, this is, I'm typing on my desktop here, and you share the terminal window with somebody. So if I wanted to, this is my uh, laptop right here that we're on, because I sent somebody else my SSH key, so someone else is on my computer right now. So if I was on my desktop here and I wanted to get into my works project, I could do that. And I can get into that because you can't you can't share a terminal and then you know get into an atom like that. So or you can't get into a Sublime Text. So where it really comes in handy using Vim is when you can use the editor inside of Teammate. So if I wanted to look into my works DB schema, which is a giant nightmare, we have 5,500 lines in our schema. So if I wanted to do that, I can get in there and I can goof around with that. So if I wanted to edit it and I wanted to say we don't need academic enrichments, we can blow that up. And now it's gone, along with too much other stuff. So that's what's great about Vim, is it's really good for pair programming with, with tools like Tmux, and it, it really comes in handy for stuff like that. I wouldn't be able to work remotely if I didn't have that, because otherwise we would all just be on a Google Hangout, you know, chit-chatting, saying, well, delete that, delete that, and it's a huge pain. The other great thing about it, too, is since two people are sharing the terminal, if I'm editing something over here, blah, 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 I'm on my desktop, I can also do the same thing on my laptop. So it's you never, one person doesn't always have complete control. You can do whatever you want. It's two people working it at the same time. So what we are on to next is what is Vim? Vim is an editor built right into your terminal. Uh, you probably have it already installed. Vim is very customizable and easy to pair with like we just showed, and Vim is impossible to learn. And I was wrong when I said that because Vim is not impossible to learn. It's just super intimidating and very hard if you don't know the right steps. So the four biggest blockers, which I found a lot of guides which were great, but nobody really talks about just the super, super basic stuff. Everyone kind of glosses over it. So how do I open files? How do I move inside of Vim? How do I write inside of Vim? And how do I close Vim? Which are things you really take for granted because they are so simple with other editors like Sublime and Atom. And uh, you just open Vim by typing Vim. So that's super simple. And uh, it, you can just type Vim inside. So I'm in WebMit is my company's project. So we hit Vim, and there we are in Vim. And from inside Vim, just like a lot of, you can use uh, like Fuzzy Find in uh, Atom, and you can use Fuzzy Find in uh, Sublime Text. You can use that in Vim too. So I open it up, and I hit Control P is Fuzzy Find for Vim. And from there, you can find whatever file you want. You know, observation Hours is a nightmarish ticket I just worked on. So here's everything for observation hours. And you can find anything you want just like that. So that's uh, that's kind of the trick of opening stuff in Vim. You can also type Vim dot, and it'll open up the whole directory. And this isn't a super good way to open stuff in Vim, because this is obviously way more than you want to see. So it's usually best to open up Vim and Control P to find exactly what you're looking for. How do I move in Vim? So this, if you look up the keyboard for how to use Vim, this is what you find. And it is obviously really intimidating. And this is not what you want to see when you're asking, how do I move down one line? So in Vim, what you need to do to move is you have four keys right in a row, H, J, K, and L. H is left, J is down because it's like a down symbol, K is up, and L is right. And it, it actually does get pretty intuitive. It's really hard when you first start doing it. But with some practice, just like everything else in Vim, it'll start to come to you. How do I write in Vim? So there's three different modes in Vim. There's no, there's actually more, but these are the ones you're going to focus on. Normal, which is just moving around. Insert, which is inserting new text, and that's how you write. Visual, which is text selection, text selections, manipulations of sections. So it's like highlighting a bunch of text. And the one that gets everybody is how do I quit Vim? How do I exit Vim? I've seen people just stop wanting to learn Vim because they don't know how to exit Vim. Uh, the best way to exit Vim is if you want to write the changes that you've quit, that, that you've made and quit, it is colon WQ for write quit. You can also write and not quit. You can just quit if you haven't made any changes and you can force quit which is just saying, I'm done. I don't want to save any of these changes, but I'm done with this. And you can also command Q if you're really frustrated. Best way to practice Vim. You can mess around inside of Vim while looking at Vim commands, and there are no other ways. It is impossible to practice Vim if you're not looking at some type of reference, pretty much. And I just want to fit this Kanye West dancing gif in there. There's no reason. 
and we get these transitions. So Vim culture, <clears throat> Vim has a reputation of everyone's an evangelist for it. Everyone is super into Vim or they just don't use it. So this picture right here is pretty good screenshot of that. It's a, over one year, the average Vim user saves 11 minutes in productivity, although they lose 27 hours through evangelizing Vim non-users. <clears throat> and also, how do you know if a developer uses Vim? Don't worry, they will tell you. That is also very true. I don't think I've ever met someone at my work who doesn't say I use Vim within the first two days of talking to them. And dot files. Dot files are really good for customizing your terminal. Uh, if you saw my terminal, it probably looks a lot different than many other terminals you've seen. Certainly if you use just basic terminal, it looks nothing like that. So it's great for customizing your terminal aliases and everything else. So you can start by stealing somebody else's dot files. These dot files are actually really simple to get. They're uh, ThoughtBot style files. They took maybe 10 minutes to install them, getting all the dependencies sorted out. So one of the aliases that I have, which I'm 100% sure is not going to work, and we can take a look at why that is, is Ross, and it will play Rick Ross, or it should play Rick Ross. So in this case, it's not going to play Rick Ross because it says, hey, what's going on here? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go figure out why that is. So it's pointing towards dot dot files. So I don't think I have a dot dot files. I guess I do. All right, so we don't have, I don't, I'm not using dot dot files. Those are old dot files that I'm using. So inside dot files, we are looking for Vim alias. So here what we're doing is we're typing Vim and then we're typing the path of the file that we're opening, which is aliases. And here, this is aliases Ross for Rick Ross. And we're not pointing this toward dot files because I have Spotify control inside of this. So I wrote quit, I changed it. I think we need to get over to a new terminal uh, because we just changed an alias. <laughs> that was way too loud. But that's just about it. So, Dot files are really intimidating at first too. So you have all this stuff going on. And that's why if you simply Google dot files, dot files, dot, dot, for example, these are the ones I grabbed. Uh, there's about 10 commands you need to run and it ends up looking great. Comes with a lot of great aliases that'll save you a lot of time too. So like G just stands for Git and it also stands for Git status. So if I want to get checkout master, I can G up, which is a fetch and rebase, and it's that quick. You don't need to worry about anything else. And I mean, there's a lot of great stuff built into them. You just gotta find the right ones for you. So that is it. Sorry about the uh, mix up with teammate, T-Mugs. Any so, questions? So I have a question. Do you use Vim all the time or only for pair programming? No, uh, I use Vim probably 20% of the time and Atom for the rest of the time. I'm trying to use more Vim, just be better at pair programming, but I'm a lot better at Atom. So I'm not really trying to force the issue with Vim because I know for the amount of time I'm gonna have to spend in Vim being slow, it's not going to translate to being more effective. So I'm kind of trying to work a little bit more in Vim, but I'm very good at Atom, so I'm working in Atom for now still. Probably like 80-20. You have to pair in uh, Vim if you're gonna do pair programming remotely. Does, this is, has nothing to do with Vim really, but does Teammate pass through audio or do you guys use something else for your audio? No, uh, we usually use Google Hangouts for audio. Uh, we use HipChat too. HipChat has pretty much Google Hangouts capabilities in it, but we just don't use it. We pretty much stuck on Google Hangouts. Cool. Yeah. How long do those uh, SSH keys live for, for those sessions in Teammate? I I programmed with someone for 10 hours before, no issues at all. We didn't have to start anything up. Uh, one time we actually dropped it and then came back to it the next morning and it was working. So it's just, I mean, it's kind of concerning, but it's, uh, <laughs> it worked out great. And I think there's a way that you can force close it. I know there were a lot of complaints about that initially because there are security holes that you can screw with on that. So uh, they, there were complaints. I think they ended up doing that. But I mean, yeah, I usually just close it. I should probably actually manually close it, but I usually just exit the window. What's the score, Ben? Huh? What's the score? <laughs> oh, it's zero, zero. <laughs> end of the first. That's why teammate so, wasn't working. If we, grab, if we grab that SSH key off the video, then we can mess with your computer, right? Hold on. 
I mean, all right, I closed <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Do your worst. <laughs> awesome. Anybody else have any other questions? Nope. All right. Next, we have Faisal, and he is going to do a talk on continuous integration. And then also afterwards, I will, I'll let you guys know, but if you don't want to hang out afterwards, you can, you can dip out and don't worry about it, but we are going to continue to hang out and actually set up a continuous integration for the lightning talks app. So if you want to hang out afterwards, I'll let you guys know again. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks Colin. So my name is Fessel and let me share my screen. Uh, there you go. You still want a quick Tmux talk? Oh uh, yeah, you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah, I'll uh stop sharing here. It should really take about two minutes. It's super simple. If I can calm down the hype from uh, Grandma Notes as a service, we'll move on. <laughs> All right, can you see my terminal? Yep. All right, we are moving. So. Let's see. So you can split north, south, east, west. Uh, you can change. There's a prefix you have to hit on mine. It is control and B. It changes with your dot files. So you can change that and you know, there's different key settings you can have. So here, what I like to do is you can have a Rails console. The next one you can have a Rails server. In the top, you can just you know screw around and do whatever you want. Maybe you can migrate. You can have another one that's Rails DB. So you've got all this stuff going on. And if you really think that this is, this is obviously too cluttered, you know, to run a Vim session. And so what you might want to do is do a new window and that's prefix C and the prefixes are all, you know, you need the guide to learn how to do them. I, it took a week for me to learn how to do those ones intuitively. So in here you could do, you know, Vim config nodes. And then in here, it can have a Vim session going. And if you say, I want to go back and see what's going on in the, you know, the other window, you can do prefix N and it'll bring you to the next window. You can just flip back and forth. So prefix up, down, left, right will bring you to whatever corresponding window that you're looking to get to, too. And if you want to, <clears throat> that's, yeah, you can just cre keep creating windows. So if you said, like, we have an, an ETL process where, you know, it helps you know, set the data up to get into our web admit project. So I can have something going on over there in the transformer. Then I can just flip back here and see what's going on. So it's really good for, you know, having quick access to different stuff. It's like stuff that you would have in different windows, but you don't have to click around. Uh, you can do, you know, you can switch pretty quick between tabs too. But I think this is better if you can, it's pretty quick. And the good thing about it too, is you're not clicking around, which is kind of the Vim philosophy too. So you're moving along pretty quick. You don't have to take your fingers off the keypad too. So it's, it's really quick once you get used to it, but it, it's a huge learning curve, just like Vim is. And you can close out of anything anytime you want to. Like if you, if you don't, if you're one of the two people who need to use Rails DB frequently, then you can keep it open. But if you want to quit it, then you can kill pain too. And then this looks a bit more normal. So you might have a Vim session above. No, I actually have models. So now it might make more sense to be poking through here and then underneath you can do something down here. Like you might want to exit Rails console and say, well, I need to check something out quickly in the transformer. Oh, not in Webinar, I'm losing it. So you can get around really quickly. You just need to kind of learn how to do it. It's not intuitive at first, uh, but once you get going, just like Vim, it all starts making sense. You just need to put, you know, brute force hours into it to make sense out of it. So Ben, what order did you learn this stuff? Did you basically just do it all at once? Like, hey, I'm going to learn Vim, Emux, uh, Vim, Tmux, and uh, what was the other tool you were using? Uh, teammate. Teammate, was it like all at once and you're just like, okay, I'm just going to go in all of them? Or were you like, okay, first I'm going to learn Vim, and then after I learn Vim, I'll learn how to use this other one? Um, <laughs> what was the actually, You know what I learned how to do today was this. 
is just splitting windows. I learned how to do that before the talk. So I saw my uh, coworker while we were working with teammate split it vertically like that. And I thought, Oh, I should learn how to do that for this talk I'm about to give. So I learned how to do that. But, um, uh, very first I started with just very super basic bib knowledge. Like I learned it. I went on a little trip before I started this job and I learned it on the plane. I just spent about 10 hours screwing around with them to try to get pretty good at it because I knew that's how people pair programmed. And I re didn't really want to come in, you know, with my pants down, not knowing how to use them at all. And a uh, teammate is really just, you share a terminal. So you don't really need to learn teammate. Uh, Tmux is what you really need to learn. So it's, it's not really three tools that you need to learn. It's really just two. And uh, one of them is you really not messing around with it too much. Like if you want to get your setup right, you know, it's just that a lot of people will just do that. And uh, you can save a session like that <clears throat> so that you come back into it and it's configured every time. But since I don't really, I haven't really messed around too much with the BIM config with Tmux, I, I haven't really had a need to do that. I'm usually more prone to just, you know, create a new window and maybe split that, like have the console on the top server on the bottom and then in a the new window I'll have you know vim whatever I'm doing there so I'm definitely not an advanced user by any means but it's it's something that you need to put the time in to get a hang of super interesting yeah but it's it's kind of hard to give a talk about it because you can't say, well, you hold you hold caps locks hit B and then you hit you know quote sign and then you hold caps locks you hit B and then you hit you know percent sign. And so you really need to get your hands on it to understand it. Yeah, it feels like you you just want to go and and try all these shortcuts out and go to that one slide that you shared earlier, which gives you all the shortcuts and just try to navigate around Vim a little bit and then just. Yeah, and the best thing to do is just Google, uh, I think it's teammate uh, cheat sheet and uh, Vim cheat sheet. And they're the best thing is they give you all the most common commands. Uh, but it's, it's good to see it in person because I remember when I heard about Vim, I opened it up and I thought just, you know, what the hell is this? I have no idea what's going on here. It's super fun to watch like screencasts of people who are really good at Vim, like mm -hmm. just like wrangling the, the text in different ways. And it's just like, Oh my God. It's like scary <laughs> watching just like the text fly around the page. You know, who's amazing at Vim is uh, Mike Kudermarsh, one of the mentors. He's just unbelievable at it. And I remember one night I was just in on a Saturday night and I was like, I really am struggling to learn Vim. He goes, why don't we just hop on a hangout and I'll teach you. It's like, Oh, all right. So he did. And it was just it was crazy watching him work around in it. And it's like, I see why people really want to focus on this and not, you know, mess around and sublime and Adam and just be confident when you can do this and be great at it. So. He's a great guy. Great, great developer. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> As Chris said, very confident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome, cool. Colin, do you wanna wanna jump in, or are you still code shipping? Uh, I was switching up API keys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to forget about it. I want to. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy to watch people who are actually competent at Vim. Like when I was at Hash Rocket, all those guys were just like reasoning through when they did their show and tell, and it was pretty amazing how how fast they could get through it. I suck at it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was working with a developer who's been, you know, around our company for something like 10 years. And I was working, pairing with him on something, but I was in Adam and he was just watching me work and he was impressed with how I worked in Adam. So I was just kind of like, do I really want to spend all this time in Vim when I'm this good at Adam that I'm impressing people who've been developing for 10 years? Yeah, I probably should. 